Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of whatever we called this. Snack Attack Unboxing is what it was. There we go. Hey, another Universal Yum Box. Isn't that exciting? In our new home. In a new home. A new location. Mm -hmm. Which makes all the difference to the flavors that you experience at home. So... Get ready, buckle up, because we are about to explore Taiwan, which is not a country, right? Yeah. Or this video will get banned in China. Hooray, Taiwan, I have to read this. Sorry, I was just putting put it off to the side. <laughs> it's my job Do to read. Job. I forgot what my job was. I am sorry, I've already fallen down on the job here. Mm -hmm. Explore Taiwan. Taiwan isn't just the island of bicycles, lush tropical forests, and ancient temples. It's home to some of the most unique yums on the planet. Ready to explore a whole island's worth of flavor? All right. I'm a little nervous for you for this box. Yeah? You yeah. think it's going to be worse than some of the others? I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Taiwan is also known as the Kingdom of Butterflies. Ooh. All right. Skipping past the interesting information and the trivia train, blah, blah, blah. Start here with the bubble tea popcorn. Oh. There is no picture of it. You just have to find it in the... <gasps> Boba. Popcorn with a terrific Taiwanese twist. We simply couldn't have a Taiwan box without including the country's most beloved beverage, bubble tea. Invented in the 1980s, bubble tea, also known as boba tea, comes in many different delicious variations. At its core, it is a combination of tea, milk, and chewy tapioca pearl bubbles. Today, the Taiwanese classic has exploded into an international sensation with no signs of stopping. In 2019, the bubble tea market was valued at a whopping $2.4 billion, and it's estimated by 2027 to reach $4.3 billion. So it's no surprise that many Taiwanese tea shops would want to claim it as their invention, like the Chun Shu Tang Tea House in Taichung and the Hanlin Tea House in Tainan. Their ownership battle went to court for 10 years, only to determine that because bubble tea was not patented, no one could be declared the rightful inventor, and so the mystery lives on. Luckily, there's one thing we can all agree on, it is delicious. And with this mm -hmm. caramel bubble tea infused popcorn, you'll taste for yourself why we couldn't kick off this Taiwan adventure any other way. You've never had bubble tea, have you? I didn't know it was a thing. There's so, two different kinds in there. Popcorn. There's like a darker one. That has more flavor. I need a bigger hill for your paws. I like it. I love almond bubble tea. Just tastes like caramel popcorn? I think it doesn't, but... I think it's delicious. It's sweet, but I don't really like popcorn, so not my bag. Moving on to the local customs, kimchi and soy sauce crackers. Asian spicy cabbage on a crispy cracker. No. Look at this yum. See where it says Korean kimchi? Mm -hmm. If you're wondering why Korean pickled cabbage, no, is in a Taiwan <laughs> box, that's because locals love kimchi. In mm. fact, they love it so much, they have their own Taiwanese kimchi called pao kai, pickled veggies. Different from spicy Korean kimchi, Taiwanese kimchi is more sweet and sour to suit the local preference for non-spicy foods. Even these kimchi crackers, despite their name, have gotten the Taiwanese treatment with soy sauce toning down the heat. It is a savory, sweet, crunchy treat that is quintessentially Taiwanese. I like it. Uh huh. I don't like the way it looks. 
Does it look ominous or something? It looks like it's got little bits of green thing in there. No mm -hmm. thing with little bits of green thing is a good thing. It's a cracker. It's got a little heat to it, but not much. That seems fine. <laughs> Didn't really have a whole lot of flavor, but... I think it has a lot of flavor. Your taste buds are so weird. That's entirely possible. But compared to some of the other crackers I've been eating, like those chicken brisket crackers, those biscuit? are like... I don't know what they're actually called. Chicken biscuit crackers? They've got too much flavor on those, so... I don't really like them. I My can't dad eat does. any of those. I don't think I could eat any, any, any of these either because there is a kind of spicy aftertaste that mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of. But I did not hate it as much as I thought I would, which is probably the most praise it's going to get. Well, Next, lemon and pink Himalayan salt pea crackers. Mm. Taiwan's classic with a salty citrus twist. Salty fruit? This unusual combo isn't so unusual in Taiwan. It is the norm. Fruit vendors often include a complimentary salt or spice packet, and local kids grow up sprinkling salty and savory spices on their ripe or unripe fruit to reduce bitterness, enhance sweetness, or give it more complex flavor. If you're still skeptical about the combo, try these lemony, salty, crunchy pea twists. The sweet and zingy flavor explosion will have you reaching for the salt shaker the next time fruit is served. Sometimes people put, like, salt on their watermelon. It's weird. I don't want to salt my fruit. Me neither. That's why I'm saying it's weird. I think my grandpa used to do it. Not, you don't like lemon, do you? No. And I do not like lemon. So what do you think? I do not like these pea crackers. Oh, you don't want another one? I do not want another one. Huh. Thank you for offering this, sweetheart. I love you. Ooh, I love you too. I do not love pea crackers, however. All right, Chinese influence, yuzu sponge cake. Taste Taiwan's favorite fruit, citrusy yuzu. If you've never tasted yuzu, Imagine a citrus fruit with a thick, coarse skin that tastes like a lemon, mandarin, and grapefruit in one. <laughs> Amazingly floral and zesty, that is yuzu. Originally found in China, it eventually made its way to Taiwan and the rest of East Asia. Today, it's used in everything from hot springs and skincare to tea and sauces. The most surprising form we've seen? The yuzu chicken burger, a seasonal item at McDonald's. The tastiest form we've seen... Sweet, jammy yuzu in this moist, spongy cake. Ready to taste the zingiest fruit in Taiwan? You will like this. I will? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how much that you're trying to crush it or not. I wasn't trying to eat the whole thing. I didn't. I don't know. I, it's buttery. Uh-huh. Buttery, spongy cake. A little dry. But but fruity. Mm -hmm. Kind of a vague fruitiness that you exploits the them. yuzu fruit combination thing. Yeah, sure. Huh, I like it, huh? Um, it's passable. I think if I had some milk to go with it, I might enjoy it more. Because it is a little too dry. But it's not overly sweet, which I like. I like the buttery flavor. It kind of reminds me of those butter cookies around Christmas. Yeah, those are nice. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the black truffle potato fries. Here we go. The crispiest, classiest fries in Taiwan. When you think of black truffles, you probably think of gourmet European dishes, mm -hmm. but that may change soon. In 2014, scientists dug up four new species of truffles found only in Taiwan, including one in Tai Tung and one in Kaohsiung. Since truffles are mostly imported and can cost upwards of $108 per ounce, it's no surprise that they want to mass produce the truffles within 10 years. Till then, there's another way to savor Taiwanese truffles, 
these crispy, earthy potato fries. One bite, and you'll understand why locals are so excited about their truffle treasure. Your look does not fill me with optimism and hope for this one. That looks like a fry. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a stale one of those, fry. Yeah, one of those stale fries that you find at the it's bottom like, of your car that you Yeah, right? Oh, like I thought I threw ago. that. When was the last time I had fries? Oh, way too long ago. <laughs> I mean, that is not a fry. It's a stale fry. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> mm. Oh. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. It's not aftertaste. That aftertaste is not good. Oh, God. What? Is that truffle? <laughs> I'm, I'm declaring my hatred of a truffle. We've had, we've had like black truffle stuff before oh. and it was disgusting. Oh. And I am not picky. I love Ooh. gourmet food. Mm, I am. I do not like black truffle. Yeah, I'm declaring it bad. <laughs> Anybody who thinks black truffle is fancy food is kidding themselves. Or maybe I'm just not rich enough to enjoy the flavor. I don't know. Moving on to taro cream wafers. Let's hope this is better. Potatoes nuttier, richer kin. Say hello to taro, potatoes tropical purple flecked cousin. With a complex nutty flavor and extreme versatility, taro is beloved in Taiwan. In fact, there's an entire celebration dedicated to the root. Every October, thousands of locals flock to Little Kinmen for the annual taro festival, where guests can dig for their own fresh taro take pictures with the friendly purple mascot, and enjoy a wide assortment of sweet and savory taro dishes. Want to celebrate taro like the Taiwanese? Just crunch into these luscious taro cream wafers. So they're like a potato? There's another one in there, get your own. It's a potato's <laughs> tropical and purple-flecked cousin. I don't see any purple. very dry, but that's because I assume wafers are dry. Mm -hmm. So is the wafer made of taro, or is it the Same. goop that's in between? Mm -hmm. It kind of tastes like a bland wafer cracker thing. Yeah. It doesn't have very much it's, flavor. It has some flavor, but not much, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not a bad flavor. But again, because the wafer is so dry, it's not especially palatable. Following well, the black truffle, though. But yeah. It's delicious. Right? It's all a matter of expectations. The lack of flavor is very much appreciated. I really do. <laughs> Neutral? That's great. <laughs> so much better than terrible. Moving on to chocolatey mochi with peanut cream. Is it mochi or mochi? Mochi sounds better. Let's go with that one. We're gonna... Think Reese's, but very, very Taiwanese. There's a sticky tradition in Hua Lain. Mochi, the pillow soft sweet treat made of sticky glut gluttonous rice. Sold everywhere in a variety of flavors. From street vendors to famous gourmet mochi stores like Chen Chi Mochi. In fact, handmade mochi is one of Hoi Lain's most popular souvenirs, and who wouldn't want mochi filled with red bean, peanut, sesame, or taro as a gift? I don't think I would have picked any of those myself. Which is why we had to include this decadent variety filled with creamy peanuts coated with a layer of chocolate. Consider it our delicious way of saying thank you for joining us on this Taiwan adventure. This is really hard to get into. So, do you... It must be the best. Around... No one's gonna there. keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> you went there, didn't you? I... I'm struggling. You need some assistance. <laughs> you, you need some help, Mrs. Hill. Mm-hmm. 
I helped loosen it for you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Here, have a chocolate as a reward. It kind of, I don't know if you'll like this. Because it looks like dark chocolate. There you go. It does, but, uh, I mean, it's still chocolate. But hey, if nothing else, it's just one little bite of a chocolate candy filled with hopefully tasty goodness. Let's I like see. it. It's not what you were, I was expecting. Nope. It's way squishier. Is that peanut butter? Mm-hmm. Inside peanut. Oh, peanut yeah. cream. Think Reese's, but very, very Taiwanese, huh? Yeah, I can get the Reese's. Okay. So peanut butter in the middle, thin chocolate chill on the outside, some kind of gummy surrounding it. I'm sure that's the mo the mochi or mochi, yeah. whatever. I mean, okay. Yeah. I don't think I especially like that combination, but I, if I, I like ate the some gummy more of them, stuff. I might grow on me. I think there's like they have ice creams, like when we go to the store, there's that little thing in the bakery it says. The mochi or whatever, and it's like ice cream. Ooh, these have two things. Maybe we'll have to try those. Yeah. Cherry blossom wafer rolls. Floral Taiwanese wafers filled with cream. Another wafer. While Japan and South Korea are known for cherry blossoms, Taiwan's cherry blossoms are blooming in popularity. Wuling Farm Cherry Blossom Festival is home to a whopping 21,000 cherry blossom trees of more than 10 different varieties. The Elysian Cherry Blossom Festival is the only one in the country to see Yoshino cherry trees. And Yangmingshan National Park, a famous cherry blossom viewing spot, attracts millions of visitors each year. It can be a bit hard to choose one, so we brought the cherry blossom to you in the form of these floral wafer rolls. Each flaky, creamy pink wafer is a feast for the eyes and mouth. And it looks like one of them got squished. Oh, see that one. It looks fancy. Mm hmm. It tastes like cherry. Again, it needs to be either accompanied with milk or dipped in ice cream or something. Ooh, with ice cream would be good. Mm-hmm. Because the wafer is just dry. But that's a really good flavor. I, I like it. cherry and strawberry, though, so that's closer to my sweet spot. Your jam. Yeah. Oh. Moving on to the black sesame and cinnamon umbrella oh. cookies. Oh. Swirling with crispy sesame, sesame and cinnamon. <laughs> You're trying to mix those yeah, together. That's right. Sesame. Squish it all together. Crispy sesame. <laughs> At first glance, you might not recognize this cracker-like yum as a cookie, and you definitely wouldn't know that it's designed with your health in mind. Each spiral cookie is made of five spice powder, cumin, star anise, clove, pepper, and cinnamon. These correspond to the five basic elements in traditional Chinese medicine, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. Since our bodies are made up of these elements, and imbalances can lead to ailments, it's believed that five spice powder can restore balance to the body. Basically, these crunchy, nutty, black sesame filled cookies are the tastiest medicine you'll ever eat. I don't know, NyQuil is pretty good. I'm just saying. So, uh, that is a strange cookie. It's mm. not flat, but, uh, Right. It's a Gardetto shaped, maybe. Hmm, I'm not detecting any flavor. <laughs> At all. That's I as neutral as you can get. I kind of get like a licorice. Maybe. All 
All right, moving on. Black sesame brittle bar. Black sesame suspended in crispy sugar. Ever wish you could eat cake every day? With these black sesame brittle bars, locally called cakes, you can! While especially popular for Chinese New Year's, black sesame cakes are an everyday treat. To make them, locals mix toasted black sesame seeds with sugar for a sticky caramelly ball, roll it into a rectangular sheet, then cut it into pieces. While crunchy nutty black sesame doesn't taste anything like the sweet and fluffy cakes you are used to, their flavor is no less decadent. Try a bite, and you might just find that this new cake takes the cake. It looks like asphalt, and it's about as easy to chew as asphalt. It does look like you ripped up a little block of asphalt from outside. Mm -hmm. well, I guess it is sesame seeds. Those are... Yeah. And that's, that's intent on breaking your teeth right there. Mm-hmm. If that's cake, that's like month old cake. <laughs> you found it at the bottom of your car. <laughs> <laughs> Again, did these Taiwanese treats get smuggled into my car and just sit there for a month? <laughs> How long was this box at the post office? <laughs> <laughs> for a couple of days, like a week. Ah. Yeah, no. I'm done. Done with that. And I think we're done. And I believe that's it, yeah, because. After that, it's just more games and stuff and nutrition facts. Well. Well, to our family that's coming over tomorrow, we'll save these for you if absolutely. you want to try them. If you also would like some Taiwanese treats, you will definitely have them because they will be here. <laughs> I won't be having any more of this. <laughs> well, some of them I will. like the, the Sure, I'll eat, I'll eat some more of this. That's fine. <clears throat> Yeah. I like the popcorn. You can wash too. out the flavor of that gravel bar. Yeah. Uh, it's not as good as the last box as far as street wise. No, no. But I like trying the different countries so we can see what other sure. countries enjoy. It, it'd be nice. We Maybe we'll have to at some point go out to get treats that aren't so full of preservatives that they have to be all dry treats to travel overseas get something yeah. fresher uh, but anyway thank you for joining us for whatever episode this was we as we now. explore Taiwan's treats and uh, decide that maybe they'd be better in person if they were fresh mm -hmm. so until next time bye everybody bye, -bye.